No echo. All good. Okay, thank you, Daniel. God bless you all. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and Chavrim. Uh, that way, by the way, means friends. It's Hebrew for the word friends there. And no doubt many of you guys are probably wondering, what is this about the title, the next world reserve currency? And the Chinese, uh, I call it the Chinese yen, but it's actually called uh, the Chinese yuan, is being considered as a next world reserve currency. Uh, this it was re, has been reported on the Wall Street Journal. So let me just kind of take you to that article there that came out. Uh, it says the release of a report on the uh, renminbi internationalizing comes as members of the IMF are on a visit to China. And I'm trying to get an actual date for you on this here so that you guys will be aware of the date. Um, and this is, okay, I'll take it back. This was done on June 15th. This is actually two weeks old, but I had gotten a message just uh, yesterday. Yesterday, a, a sister that had contacted me to let me know that it has been uh, official, the Chinese yen is going to be the next reserve currency. Now, those that may not be aware of this, the US uh, was left off uh, of being the global uh, reserve currency off the list this year. And supposedly, China may very well be taking that place. Now, according to this article here, it says Beijing, China's central bank, is preparing to take new steps to lift the global profile of the yuan as the International Monetary Fund reviews whether to grant it the elite status as a reserve currency. In a report issued late last week, the People's Bank of China detailed moves it will take to encourage the IMF to take that step, putting the currency on a par with the dollar, uh, the euro, uh, the yen, and the pound sterling. Reserve status would potentially encourage other central banks to increase their holdings of the currency. Excuse me, the currency. To win approval from the IMF, Beijing must make the case that the yuan can easily be used in the international markets. Potential steps list in the reports, including opening the door wider for foreign central banks and other institution investors to invest in Chinese bond market. Although it didn't specify a timeline, the People's Bank of China also would give foreign entities greater freedom to sell yuan denominated debt in China. Interesting, selling people's debt. Everybody gets debt. That's what's wrong with the US. Um, the US economy as well is always selling the debt. All right, moving on. Now, like I said, that has been something that I had gotten the, just recently I'd gotten the message that uh, that the Chinese yen actually has been chosen that it was that it didn't make that status there um, and uh, there because there are still a lot of articles that have not shown that as of yet but uh, uh, I'm just trying to see if we had anything else that updated that on there it looks like it looks like everything is still a little bit behind on that one so, but I don't, I didn't see anything else on that. Let's move right on into some other news here that is going on. According to DAS, uh, Russian news agency, they are reporting that Ukraine troops, uh, that is Kiev's troops, Western Ukraine, are shelling uh, the neighborhoods in and around the uh, Donsk region there, once again, using heavy tank shells and artillery in the area. Uh, and, and they're just really coming under a, uh, a heavy bombardment. Uh, Kiev forces have violated the ceasefire uh, regimen six times in Luhansk, uh, according to Luhansk militia that is there. And uh, the fighting just continually spreads out of control in, in Ukraine. And I can only imagine it's a matter of time before this fight may uh, envelop Europe. And this is one reason why the U.S. has a lot of their own troops there uh, provoking uh, President Putin nonetheless. You know, and, and, and I actually saw something that I thought was very interesting recently, a video that was documenting about um, uh, Babylon. And of course, they, they refer to the United States as being Babylon. Now, I have always agreed that in, in principle, the U.S. does represent Babylon in a way as well, because Babylon the Great is Rome, the, the, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, but she wrote a beast. You have to keep that in mind. She did write a beast, and that beast is the United States. That is her military war machine that the Vatican rise to do all the conquering around the world. So inadvertently, yes, the United States is Babylon as well. It is a twofold meaning because Babylon the Great rides that beast, that power, and because the, the Vatican itself has no power, they have no military strength of their own outside of that, of the, of the military powers that they are using to conquer the different nations around the world, including 
again, Ukraine, and one of their latest targets that they have gone for. Uh, they're also wanting to take Russia down, as we see from the statements made by uh, 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 the former governor of Florida, Jeb Bush, who stated when he was asked about Russia, what would he do? He says they should become part of the European Union. He says they're good people. Uh, he said it's just the rogue regime. Now that's just totally a slap in the face to President Putin. And, uh, and I, for one, I look at the honest side of all of this. I'm very much pro-American, but at the same time, I'm not the type of person that believes that we should just go around and bully the entire world. President Putin uh, in, in Russia and the Russian people, they have their way of life, and this is what they believe. And yet, what is the United States doing? Meddling into their business and keep pushing it down. Well, that Russian bear finally is going to get enough. But anyway, to bring out this point that I wanted to share with you, I was watching the video and they were talking about the king of the north being Russia, and I agree with that. Russia is the king of the north. Then they spoke about the king of the south. And one good point that was brought out in all this was that Barack Obama is actually from Kenya. And could it be that he is actually the king of the south? And of course, where is he king at? Not Kenya per se, but the United States. So it's a very interesting thought to think about. And if he is definitely the, considered the king of the south, well, he's the one that pushes at the king of the north. And the king of the north will destroy him in a battle, in a battle that could very well happen while the king of the south is in office. So who, who could imagine whether or not this is actually the case, if this will be, or is it actually speaking of uh, something else? I, I find it very interesting nonetheless. Okay, so let me take uh, let me take you to another um, another particular article here in Israel National News. Um, Iran they're reporting here that the Iranian commander uh, is has actually said that whether or not uh, whether or not the U.S. agrees to a, to the nuclear deal or not, Iran will still consider the United States an enemy an enemy of Satan, as they are, not an enemy of Satan, but they are the Satan itself. Now, this is from the Iranian's commander that actually stated this, and I'm trying to get this news article to open up for me. Here we go, I got it to open up now. It says, senior Iranian commander stresses that Iran will continue to view America as an enemy even if a nuclear deal is reached. Then why in the world would Barack Obama then want to do a nuclear deal with the man in the first place then? He says, Iran will continue to view the United States as the great Satan, even if a nuclear deal is reached between Iran and world powers. An Iranian commander has made clear. The military official, Brigadier General Ahmad Raza Pordastan, underlined that any possible nuclear deal between Tehran and the world powers would never mean friendship between Iran and the United States. The U.S. might arrive at some agreements with us within the framework of the Group 5 plus 1, but we should never hold a positive view over the enemy, he said in, in Tehran on Sunday, according to the FARS news agency. Our enemy with them is over the principles and is rooted because we are after the truth and nation's freedom, but they seek exploiting nations and putting them in chains, declared uh, this particular general here. Uh, he goes on to say Iranians ru uh, routinely refer to the United States as the great Satan and the slogan death to America is chanted regularly at rallies in Tehran. So yes, absolutely. Who, who in the world then would want to do any type of negotiations with a regime like this? I mean, it's just quite out. It's unbelievable to me that we would even consider uh, doing anything like that with a rogue military regime that is bent on destroying the United States. Uh, anyway, that's the, the, what we have for the news brief this afternoon. And uh, 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 not, not a whole lot else going on right now. I'm sure there's all kinds of things going on in the world, but as far as what we're trying to cover this evening, that is our news brief for this evening. I trust it's a blessing for you as well. And I uh, say, God bless you. Uh, take a chance, if you get a chance too, we just loaded on YouTube to this evening a, a uh, little teaching on um, the rod of Moses. And I think you'll find that interesting. It's one of the things that all these people that are coming around saying that they are the Moses or they're the Elijah or they're Enoch or one of the two witnesses there, 
This is one sign they won't be able to fake. I think you'll find it interesting. So I hope you get a chance to stop by there and uh, catch that news update as well. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live.